Yes, the JE main February slot is over. The results are about to come any time. For the next couple of months, you'll be hearing these terms very frequently. And what are these terms? Cutoff mark, qualifying marks, percentile score, etc., etc. So this short video is to give clarity on these terms because there's a lot of confusion about what they actually mean. Let's start with the qualifying marks. What, what is the importance of qualifying marks? We all know that JE main serves two purposes. One is it is an admission test for NITs, IIITs and certain other centrally funded technical institutions. Number two, it is the step one for IIT admission. That is, it is the qualifying test for JE advanced. So who qualifies for JE advanced? The top two and a half lakh students from uh, about 10 lakh this year, perhaps maybe a little less, little less than that. So the top 2.5 lakhs from among all the JE main aspirants get shortlisted for JE advanced. So the qualifying mark is the last mark above which equal to or above which a student would qualify for JE advanced. Like for example, in 2020, the qualifying mark was 90.37 percentile. And 2019, it was 89.75 percentile. This was for the general category. So any student who's got more than this in those two years would have qualified for JE advanced. So what is the importance of qualifying mark? The qualifying mark only signifies that you are eligible to appear for JE advanced. The qualifying mark per se does not give you admission in any engineering college, either NITs, IIITs or even IITs. So don't attach too much of importance. A lot of parents say that, uh, you know, qualifying mark is important. I don't see any importance of qualifying mark. If you get, if you are qualified, you appear, you have the eligibility to appear for JE advanced. But a student who just qualifies actually may not have the capability to get into the top 12,000 to get into IITs. So getting, say, for example, 90.37 percentile, uh, only a miracle will allow the student to actually appear for JE advanced and get a mark which will allow him to get into the IIT. So don't attach too much of importance for the qualifying marks. It is not going to give you any admission in any engineering college. You get eligibility to appear for JE advanced. That is all. Nothing more, nothing less. Then what is cutoff marks? Cutoff marks is used interchangeably with qualifying marks. So a lot of people use cutoff marks to signify the same thing as qualifying marks. Actually, cutoff marks or more particularly cutoff ranks have another meaning. What is the meaning of cutoff rank? For example, last year in uh, NIT Varangal, for admission to CSE, the cutoff rank was 2043. That means the last student to get admitted in the general category in NIT Warangal got a rank of 2043. That means anybody who's got a better rank would have got uh, admission in NIT Warangal Computer Science. So that can be called a cutoff rank. Similarly, IIIT Hyderabad last year uh, for CSE admission, the cutoff mark was 99.92 percentile or a rank of 936 in JE main. So that means anybody who's got a rank better than this or a mark higher than this would have got admission in IIIT computer science. So that is the significance of cutoff rank. But when you say cutoff mark in JE main, it is the same as qualifying marks. They are used interchangeably. And finally, let us arrive at percentile score. What is the meaning of percentile score and why percentile scores? We all know that JE main is conducted in multiple shifts. For example, 
in February, it was conducted. The paper one was conducted on 24th, two ships, 25th, two ships, 26th, two ships. That means totally six lots. So you cannot compare a raw score of say 240 in first uh, slot with say 200 in the last slot. Maybe one was easy, the other was tough. So all of these raw scores are normalized using percentile. And how is percentile calculated? Percentile indicates the number of the percentage of students who got less than or equal to your mark. Let me give an example. Suppose 100 students take JE main. Maximum mark in JE main we know is 300. Suppose out of these 100 students, the highest mark was 290. A student got 290. So if he's got 290, his percentile will be 100 percentile. So a raw score of 290 corresponds to a percentile of 100. Suppose the second highest was say something like around 285. So that means 99 students have got a mark equal to or less than 285. In which case the, the student who got 285 raw score would get a percentile of 99. Suppose the uh, third highest was something like around 280. So that means among the 100 students, 98 students have got a mark equal to or less than 280. Therefore, his percentile would be 98. This is how raw scores get converted into percentile. Then you may be asking this question, sir, I'm going to get something like around 240 in my attempt. So what would that correspond to? What kind of a percentile that corresponds to? So for doubts such as that, we have made a separate video and I will put a link to that video in the description box here where we have given the correlation between raw scores and percentile in the last year, 2020. It may not apply exactly like that in this year because uh, what happens is this year the number of students who have taken the test is a little less about six lakhs and odd so uh, but it will give you an idea may not be exactly the correlation may not hold but it will generally give you an idea as to how a raw score, raw score would get converted into percentile so the result that you are going to get for the February slot, uh, when they announce it, most probably on March uh, 7th or earlier, you would be getting four percentile scores. What are they? One is in maths, one is in physics, one is in chemistry, and then overall score percentile. So this is what you would be getting. So four percentile figures you would be getting. Similarly, you would be getting for March, for April and for May, if you are appearing for those slots. What they will do finally is, they will take the best of the four attempts. Out of the four, they will take the best one and that best one will be considered your final percentile and your ranks will be calculated on the best percentile score that you are going to get. The next question is, if more than one student gets the same percentile, it is quite possible. There will be several students who will be getting the same percentile. So what will happen? How are the ranks computed? In such a case, there is what is known as the tiebreaker rule. As per the tiebreaker rule, anybody who gets a higher mark in higher percentile in maths will get a better rank. Similarly, if there is a, uh, a tie even for maths uh, percentile, then they will consider physics. And if there is a tie even for physics, they'll consider chemistry. And if there is a tie even for chemistry, they will consider your age. Anybody who's a senior will get a better rank. So in this manner, the ranks will be computed based on your percentile scores. And this will be announced after the May attempt. And based on your ranks, you will get admission in NITs and triple ITs. So this is the meaning of qualifying mark, cutoff mark and percentile scores. With that knowledge, uh, I think you should now forget about these marks. 
and concentrate on your March, April and May attempts and do your very best. All the best for your future attempts.